Welcome back to another sprinkler tech tip video. Today's question is, why does the sprinkler valve not shut the water off? This is a really common question. Um, and I'm not gonna overcomplicate this by getting into specific electrical requirements or how to use an electrical meter and things to that nature. So I wanna make this very short and to the point, and I'm gonna use this Weathermatic silver bullet valve here as an example. And the first thing to do when troubleshooting a sprinkler valve is to isolate electrical problems from hydraulic problems or problems with water in the pipe. So a sprinkler valve, as we see here, is operated by a solenoid. That's this part here. And the solenoid is typically 24 volts AC current. And if your valve was able to come on automatically with the timer box, that's generally a sign that you do have electrical connectivity to the solenoid and you did have enough voltage to open the solenoid and lift the diaphragm. That doesn't mean uh, that that's the reason uh, or that your electrical system is okay. So the first thing that you may consider doing is go to the control box, turn the uh, dial or however, whatever control box you have, turn it to off and see if by turning the controller off, uh, if that will turn the system off. If that does not turn the system off, I would then recommend you just simply unplug the controller because perhaps there's something in the controller that even though you've turned the dial to off, it may still be sending electricity out to the field. And if you don't have an electrical meter, you may not be able to test if there's voltage leaving the controller. So just unplug it, or if it's hardwired, go to the breaker and flip the breaker off. At that point, there should be no electricity to the valve and the water should be off. If the water is not off, you have a hydraulic problem. There is something stuck in the valve that needs to be cleaned out, probably a piece of dirt or debris or the diaphragm is old and it's dried out and it's not flexible enough to be able to close. So I've got another uh, valve here that I've removed the bolts from, okay? So we're gonna open this one up and take a look at the diaphragm inside so that you can see. I'm gonna try to hold a little closer to the camera here. And as we open this up, you can see a couple things. Actually, let me hold them both open. The top has a a spring that applies pressure to the diaphragm so that it will close. And then all the diaphragm is, is a little sort of flap of rubber. It's kind of like a, you know, something you might see um, almost in, a, in the back of a toilet. It's a piece of rubber, it's specific to this valve. So you have to use the right diaphragm. And what you wanna do in your valve box is be careful. You wanna open this up and then remove the diaphragm, clean it off, look for any debris that may be um, stuck inside of here that's preventing the diaphragm from closing all the way. So clean it out really well. Most diaphragms uh, need to be aligned in a specific fashion. So you can see here, this little flap needs to be at the bottom. Make sure you set it in there as it's designed to go. And then also inspect the, the top of the bonnet here. Uh, make sure that there's nothing stuck in the spring. Also take a look at the solenoid port and make sure that there's no debris that may have gotten lodged inside that solenoid port. Uh, and then when you put the valve back together, you might also double check, I'm gonna remove the solenoid here. You might double check that, again, there's no debris inside the solenoid chamber so that this piston, that's how the valve works. Electrically, this piston, uh, when charged, goes up and down, that there's nothing inside there that could be, um, so when the solenoid piston drops, uh, that could be clogging it. So take a look inside there too. It is very likely that your valve is not turning off because uh, dirt, debris, uh, pipe shavings, something like that is lodged inside of the valve. Um, and if, uh, Let's see, two things. Number one, um, if you think there could be something with your solenoid, which is unlikely, you may take a solenoid off of another valve on your system that's known to work and just replace it on this valve. Try it again. That's an easy way to troubleshoot the valve without needing an electrical meter or to own the solenoid, etc. And then uh, sort of the last resort is probably just to replace the diaphragm uh, and perhaps even replace this whole top to the valve. 
And the recommendation that I would give to you is maybe, unless you're gonna do a bunch of them, don't buy just the solenoid, just buy a new replacement valve. You know, sometimes the diaphragms are $10 and a brand new valve might be 15, 16, 17, $18, depending on the model. So a new valve, uh, of course, this wouldn't count for some of the larger brass valves and such that may be a couple hundred dollars. And then you can just take the top, the bonnet, the brand new solenoid, and the brand new diaphragm and replace that entire top and middle assembly of the valve with brand new parts. And more than likely, that's gonna fix your problem. So again, first step is to isolate the issue um, electrically versus hydraulically, and then remove the top part of the valve and clean out the inside. Uh, you know, one thing I didn't mention, which is probably not likely. However, this, uh, this knob up here, which is called the flow control knob, if it is turned all the way down, your valve will no longer function um, at all electrically or hydraulically. You're essentially manually turning off the valve with this handle. But that's probably not the case because the valve came on and it's just not shutting off. There's likely something stuck inside the valve and it just needs to be cleaned out. So I hope that helps. And uh, again, we're here for you. You can reach us at Sprinkler Supply Store by phone, chat, and email. And we hope you join us for another tech tip. Have a great day.